For this video, we're back here today in a very sunny and very warm Tucson, Arizona at the University of Arizona. In previous videos, we discussed with Mark Krogel here at the University of Arizona how they utilize their injector board to take concentrated fertilizer stock solutions and produce a final fertilizer solution that's actually delivered to their strawberry crop. And today we're back with Mark again today because we want to discuss more of what he alluded to in earlier videos, that being his concentrated stock A and concentrated stock B tanks. So Mark, if you'd walk us through today kind of your A and your B stock tanks, uh, what they are, how you make them up, and how you use them then to produce that final fertilizer solution. Okay, we're using the Yamazaki strawberry nutrient solution. Um, it's a fairly widely used solution, especially in Japan. Now, uh, what we start with, though, is a water quality analysis because we need to know what's in our water before we start adding things to it. For example, our water has always a minimum of 30 parts per million of calcium, among some other uh, elements. And so we need to know that so that when we're creating our recipe, we only add as much as we really need uh, so we're not adding too much just wasting money or causing some some, some imbalance some imbalance exactly um, so to generate then our desired concentrations of nutrients knowing our what's in our water already we we use uh, fertilizers and add them uh, to our concentrated stock solution and for in our a tank we use potassium nitrate as our primary potassium and nitrogen source we're adding 30 grams per liter um, of for our concentrate, our 100x concentrate of potassium nitrate. Uh, we're adding uh, magnesium sulfate. We're adding that at uh, about 12 grams per liter. Um, and then we're adding ammonium sulfate as our ammonium source at a little more than 3 grams per liter. And then we need micronutrients. All hydroponic solutions need to have micronutrients. Uh, we're adding sodium borate. Uh, sodium borate is a very soluble form of boron. Uh, we add that at, at 0.3 grams per liter. Uh, we add manganese sulfate at uh, 0.17 grams per liter. We're adding copper sulfate at 0.02 grams per liter. We're adding sodium molybdate at 0.01 grams per liter. And then finally zinc, zinc sulfate at uh, 0.1 one five grams per liter. So that completes our A tank, except for the acids that we add. Um, our water happens to have a fair amount of carbonate, so we always need to add some acid. And we, we use nitric acid, um, and we add that at five mils per liter in our, in our stock tank. And that contributes not just the acidification, but also uh, the, the, the nitrate form of nitrogen, and we account for that. Right. And we're adding phosphoric acid, and that is our sole phosphorus source in our A-tank. Um, and we're adding that at 4.7 uh, mils per liter of stock. Okay, so that completes tank A made at a 100 times concentration. That's right. Okay, so then what about your tank B? Tank B is where we keep our calcium and uh, keep our calcium separate from our, our tank. And we're adding calcium nitrate, which gives us a calcium source and a nitrate source. And we're adding calcium nitrate at five grams per liter. And then we add calcium chloride that helps make up the, the calcium we need without adding additional nitrate. Um, we add that at 7.6 grams per liter. And then we keep our iron in our B tank as well. And we're adding um, uh, Sprint at, at uh, two grams per liter. That's a, for a final concept. So the 333 Sprint is the one you're That's the one we're using. using. Okay. So that's a 10% uh, iron solution. And then we add nitric acid in our B tank as well. We're adding that at 4.5 mils per liter um, just to have some acidification in both tanks. So again, you're keeping, uh, just to reiterate, we sort of talked about this, but you're always making sure that your sulfates and your phosphates in these concentrated tanks are in a separate tank from your calcium. That's so right. So you don't get the precipitation. And just sort of a, one reiteration, though, you're, you're giving a rate here in your tanks that is based off of Yamazaki but you've taken your water quality into account. So someone else wanting to sort of use your recipe 
they would need to know their own water quality, use the Yamazaki basic recipe, and make their own adjustments, because their water quality may be different from it's yours. It's going to be different, and, and they need to know what's in it. And um, again, we, we don't have to add so much calcium, so we're not adding the expected concentration of Yamazaki. We're adding less than that right. and, and achieving uh, some final calcium concentration. So with our water adjusted a little bit for the Yamazaki recipe, um, what we finally end up with is we get, um, we have 70 parts per million of the nitrate form of nitrogen, and we have seven parts per million of the ammonium form of nitrogen. That gives us that 10 to one ratio. That's, that's pretty good overall for, right. for strawberry growth. Uh, we're looking at 21 and a half parts per million of phosphate um, and our potassium is at 117 so not quite a 2 to 1 potassium to nitrogen like in, in other hydroponic solutions that you might see our calcium I include a range because our water changes from 30 to 40 so we're getting um, 55 to 80 parts per million of calcium that's a safe range for strawberry um, well, that, Mark, you bring up a good point on that with the calcium, if I can ever. Growers also really need to check their water quality in the different seasons because your water quality can change throughout the year. It can. And you may have to then know that and make adjustments if you're growing year-round based on your water quality changes. Right. Our water sources come from several locations, so we can never be too yeah, sure exactly what's in there. But I know that we're within, within that range, and that right. range is, is, is safe. We're adding... Uh, 12 parts per million of, of magnesium, and our sulfate level is about at 16 parts per million. So that's pretty much how Yamazaki looks when we mix it up. Account for water, water quality. Right. So you've got your concentrate A and B, as we mentioned, and then that is concentrated 100 times more concentrate because your injectors that we've talked about dilute that and that's deliver right. what you just mentioned. But you do have a third tank over here. Right. We, sometimes we need to acidify even more. And I don't want to add nitric acid because that's changing my final recipe for nitrogen. And I don't want to add phosphoric acid because that's for the same reason. So we use sulfuric acid. And it's pretty dilute. Well, we're using uh, two mils of sulfuric acid per liter of stock. So it's, it's a fairly dilute solution. But it's enough that when we need to change our pH, we can do it. Right. So it's just, it just gives you that extra ability right. if you need to. We've already taken care of, of the buffering capacity of the water with the, the acids that we've added in the tank. So it's, it's pretty easy to change it after that point. And, and then as you mentioned, I think in an earlier video, you have in, the, the, in your injector board, you have the capacity to either go one route where you're injecting acid right. or just bypass that. Just bypass it all together. you don't need that. So. so this is basically, we'll talk more about some more of your nutritional management, but this gives everyone an idea then of the specifics on your particular fertilizer program and how you're delivering that mineral nutrition.